Hi, everyone. So welcome to the live stream today. Very much excited for having you on a special Q&A session today. Uh, let me know. Give us a thumbs up on the video when you join. That way we get more engagement on the video and YouTube will be able to push the video so we can reach as many students as possible. Right, so I see some of you guys joining the stream. Welcome to the stream. Very much excited for having you. It's always a pleasure coming your way to assist you, to provide you with the assistance that you need in order for you to prepare well for your examination. And today I want to touch on something that is uh, very critical, something that is crucial, something that is fundamental when it comes to your examination and position you to be able to ultimately pass the exams. And I believe that... Um, we are preparing ourselves for the ICA examination. And most of you guys are thinking about papers to write. You have questions on some of the things that you've studied. So on the live stream today, I want to provide you with some strategies, some techniques to assist you in the selection of your subject. And most importantly, to be able to help you so that you can uh, make the right decision in relation to what it is that you need to write, how you need to blend the subjects up in order for you to actually prepare well for your examination. So I see some of you guys joining. Welcome to the stream. Give us a thumbs up on the video when you join the stream. And I see some of you guys coming in as well on Facebook. Share the video. Let's reach as many students as possible watching the live stream. And comment in the chat box any questions you have for me that you would want me to uh, share my thoughts on and to assist you in order for you to uh, prepare for the examination. Give us a thumbs up on the video. Comment in the chat box any questions that you have for me. Right? I see some of you with a thumbs up already on YouTube. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. We really appreciate the support and the love for us here. Right? We see some of you with a thumbs up on YouTube, as well, Facebook as well. Welcome to the live stream. Right, so going straight up into our discussions today, we want to uh, touch on a couple of things that we need to look at, we need to position ourselves on in order for us to uh, pass the examination and most importantly, take our career, our lives to the next level. So put in the chat box, let me know, let's share some thoughts together. What subjects are you writing? Uh, what, what are you planning to write? Because we have about two weeks to go approximately uh, probably some three weeks to go for the registration for the exams to be uh, closed. But it's very important for you to understand what subjects you need to register for and then how you can position yourself in order for you to ultimately uh, pass the examination in that case. So put in the chat box, maybe share your thought with me real quick. What subjects are you writing? And uh, what are the challenges that you've been facing so far in the things that you are writing? And how are you positioning yourself in order for you to actually pass the examination? So I see some comments coming in uh, from Facebook. Uh, Main Mod Joseph said, thank you, sir. You are welcome. Nayan Gupta said, sir, I scored 60 in FR and 42 in F5 performance measurement. Okay. That is great. Um, at least you got one financial reporting, but uh, F5, you couldn't get it. Uh, that is okay. I hope that you are preparing for the to reset it for December 2020 examination diet. And I hope that you will be able to uh, work hard on it, touch on the various minor issues you need to touch on in order for you to actually pass the examination. Um, Kekula said, thank God that we are back again. Yep, thank God. Nicole Williams. Nicole, it's been a long time since I heard from you. I hope you're doing well, and uh, I hope you enjoy life. It's been a while since I heard from you, though, on the live stream, certainly. Right. So I want to share with you a couple of thoughts you need to understand, a couple of things that you need to take into consideration in order for you to position yourself strategically to pass the examination. Now, one of the things that you have to understand is this. That as you are preparing yourself, as you are going into the exam hall, as you are deciding. Now, last week when we were on the live stream, someone mentioned something and said, Oh, Ishira, I'm not certain whether 
I'm going to be writing the exams. I'm not certain whether I will be doing this. Let me know in the chat box. Uh, I see some of you guys putting the papers and your issues there. This is a Q&A session and also a how-to session. I'm going to provide you with some strategies on how you got, you're going to study for those of you who are going to be writing the ICA exams in November or uh, ACCA in December or the Institute of Chartered Accountants um, Nigeria in also in December in that case. So comment in the chat box. Let me know the subjects you are writing. Uh, what has been the areas of challenges for you and what uh, are the things you would want me to share my thoughts on for you in that case. Nicole said I will be doing advanced audit and assurance paper in December. Okay, that is great. So Nicole, how is the preparation going? You know, advanced audit and assurance, there are key areas that you have to focus on. Audit procedures, very critical. Audit evidence, very critical. You must understand the issue in relation to going consent status of the company, the reporting, modification of the auditor's report. These are all key areas that you need to focus on in order for you to increase the chances of passing the examination. And most importantly, you have to also focus on the issue about ethics, uh, dealing with the issue about professional liability. So all these things are critical areas, but you gotta make sure that on top of these things, audit uh, planning, audit evidence, audit procedures, business ethics, reporting, going consent status of the organization, all of these things are very, very fundamental areas that you have to be, you have to make sure that you are strong in, in order for you to position yourself to actually pass the examination. So wishing you all the best, Nicole, and uh, we'll be uh, touching on a couple of things as we move ahead uh, uh, in the discussion. So let me know if there are any areas that you have challenges with, and then I could, I can provide you with some specific assistance in there. Uh, Sir, could you briefly talk on the conceptual framework of financial reporting? Um, main mode, I we've discussed this already on the channel here, uh, so I wouldn't be able to go through everything about it. So we've discussed it on the channel here uh, in, in relation to that. So you can check out the uh, playlist on, I think, accounting standards or something like that. We covered this uh, sometimes earlier, so you can check it out on the channel. Uh, in that case, Henry Tete Brigada said, I'm taking MA and FR next month. Any key areas, please? Okay, management accounting and financial reporting, very critical. When it comes to financial reporting, like I say all the time, you need to make sure that you are strong in your accounting standards. Um, just this week, uh, when my students here, uh, we were looking at the issue in relation to um, uh, the final accounts. And uh, when we finished, a couple of them were called me and we were having a discussion and there was like, they were like, oh, Ushira, it's like every footnote is an accounting standard. And I said, yes, every footnote is an accounting standard. And I, keep, I kept telling them that because we spent, we spent about 10 weeks or so dealing with accounting standards and conceptual framework, regulatory framework, about 10 weeks on accounting standards and some of them were like yeah it's like we are never going to finish uh it's like uh we are just doing accounting standards but immediately we got to the single entity financial statement statement of profit or loss statement of financial position and the cash flow statement you begin to realize that the accounting standards are going to be playing a key role there so henry and to every other student writing financial reporting You've got to make sure that you understand the accounting standards. Good news is I've covered numerous, all, all, almost all the accounting standards on the channel. So you can just check the accounting standard series playlist on the channel and watch the videos. Make sure you solve a lot of questions and get the ICA question kit. Very, very important. I'm hoping that you are attending lectures as well. So your lecturer or tuition center will be providing you with some strategies on how you can study. But number one, make sure you are strong in accounting standards. When you are strong in accounting standards, it will help you to answer the question two on accounting standards. Not only that, it will also help you to answer the single entity financial statement, either the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, statement of financial position, or the cash flow statement. So you've got to make sure that one accounting standards you're strong there. Uh, uh, the single entity, you're going to be strong there once you are strong in accounting standards. 
Then interpretation of financial statements. Very critical there. You've got to make sure that you understand interpretation of financial statement. Almost always, students' challenge is not their inability to compute, but is their inability to interpret. The good news is that I've also covered that on the channel, so you can check that video also on the channel. On I did a two-part series on that last semester, uh, I think about three months ago, so it's on the channel, and you can watch that video on the interpretation of financial statements. So if you are strong in your standards, single entity goes, is going to be well with you, uh, interpretation of financial statement, then you go to the question five, and that is going to be the normal land dealing with ethics, conceptual framework, as well as the issue in relation to uh, regulatory framework, all right? So the conceptual framework, regulatory framework, and business ethics. These are theory areas you go to take your time there, and then you work them out real quick. Then, right after that, then you can come and cruise and do finalization on consolidation. I keep on telling students this all the time, don't answer consolidated financial statement questions first in the financial reporting examination. I don't care who taught you. I don't care how you think you understand consolidated financial statements. I don't care how you think you are efficient in consolidated financial statements because nine out of 10, there was always going to be a statement that is going to trick you. And for those of you who think that, oh, putting down a pro forma will give me a mark, you will not get anything for that. So sometimes when you see, yeah, consolidated statements of financial position, then you see people put pro forma down. Then they write property, plant, and equipment. Then they bring their parents. They bring their subsidiary. Then they try to write inventory. Who are you deceiving? You must do the workings first before you will be able to now prepare the financial statements for the organization in relation to that. So consolidation is going to be the last thing I want you to attempt in the exam or when it comes to financial reporting. So Henry, financial reporting and everybody else writing financial reporting, these are some of the things that you need to understand. And I hope that, like I said, you are attending lectures, your teaching provider or your lecturer is going to also provide you with some tips uh, in relation to the key issues you have to focus on in that case. For management accounting, it's a generic paper. So you've got to make sure that you are strong in the fundamental in management accounting. Certainly, there will be something on budgeting in there. So you make sure you understand the preparation of the functional budget, the master budget, and then the theory areas in budgeting. Remember, management accounting, depending on the way the examiner is going to be structuring, it could be 30, 60, oh, sorry, 30, 70, or 40, 60. That is 40% uh, theory or 30% theory, and then uh, 60 or 70% computation. So depending on how excited the examiner is for that particular examination sitting, there is going to be a lot of theories, and you've got to make sure that you read the theories because nine out of ten of the time, I see many students doing management accounting, and their focus is just on the computation. They are doing the variances, investment appraisal, uh, budgeting. All of these things are important, but if you are not strong as well in the theories, you're going to uh, screw up. So you make sure you understand the uh, budgeting, uh, variance analysis. Certainly, there is going to be something on that in the exam hall, and you should be in a better position to pass the examination. So Henry and everyone else writing man accounting, I think this is what you need to uh, look out for in that case. Roland said, good evening, thanks for the great stuff. You are welcome, Roland. Nayan Gupta said, I work out my weakness in PM paper in interpretation of financial, in interpretation of questions. For that, I am going to do more and more section C questions. All right, that is good. I am planning to give FM and PM both in December. I have not started FM, but I want from you, how do I proceed so as to cover firstly some tips? All right. If you've not started with FM, the exams is just in December. Uh, that is about one month, uh, two weeks, I guess, because it's going to be first week in December also. So this is what I would suggest. Um, you want to add the FM to the PM, and you've not started the FM yet. If I were you, I would just focus on the PM in December. Okay, so Nayan, just focus on the PM uh, in December so that you prepare in March to write FM and any other thing else. Okay, so because the time is limited. FM, yes, I could give you some key areas you have to focus on, like sources of revenue, cost of capital, business valuation, 
uh, investment appraisal. All these are critical areas, but each of these areas require some time, some questions, practice, some sacrifices. So I wouldn't recommend because PM also has its own uh, challenge already. So because of the limitation of the time, probably you just have to focus on the PM. But in case you want to also add the FM, definitely because maybe you have time or something like that, then you can just go through it. But you make sure that you practice a lot of questions because FM is technical and has a lot of areas that you can uh, have challenges with, especially when you are learning, uh, how do we call it, under pressure. All right, so that is what I would say there. Ke Kekula said, I will be doing FR and MA and principal of tax, ICAG examination in November. Okay, Kekula, that is great. I've spoken about FR and MA already. Principles of taxation, I've spoken about that as well. There are a couple of areas that you need to uh, talk, look at when it comes to principle of taxation. Uh, probably tomorrow or Thursday, I'll be covering some issues as well in relation to principles of taxation. But you have to make sure that you are okay with income tax liabilities of individuals, corporate tax liabilities, capital allowance, dealing with the issues about value-added tax, withholding tax, uh, tax administration in Ghana. All these are key areas that you need to focus on in order for you to uh, pass the examination and ultimately uh, take your life to the next level. Most importantly, you've got to make sure that you use the right material as well. So you got to make sure that you are using a great study material to be able to assist you in order for you to prepare well for the examination. And uh, there's a new uh, taxation book. It is for both level two taxation, principle of taxation, and level three advanced taxation. And it's a book that is strictly based on the ICA syllabus, strictly based on the ICA syllabus. Uh, I don't write for other things. No, I'm strictly writing for the ICA syllabus. So this is the one of the books that you can find now that is strictly based on the ICA syllabus. So when you take it through, it is everything on the I, in the ICA syllabus that we took time to cover in this book. So you can get a copy. You call the number 050-114-9296. You can see the number scrolling below the screen and you, you will be able to get a copy. So if you are doing taxation, and you are looking for study material, this is a book I'll recommend for you. What was published less than a month ago in the UK. So we just got copies of it yesterday. So you can get copies of it if you are interested. So let's see what else we've got. Nayan said, I have planned to do two to three questions of PM. To do daily two to three questions, please give me tips on how I cover my FM as fast as possible. How should I proceed? Like I said, uh, looking at the way you are saying you are doing two to three questions of PM daily, meaning that you have some time available. So it means that you can uh, focus on the FM. I think you brought a build up question. Now I see some of you guys joining as well. Welcome to the live stream. This is a Q&A session. I'm providing you with some examination tip. So comment in the chat box with any questions you have for me, the subjects that you are writing, all right? The subjects that you are writing, and then the areas you have difficulty with, and let me provide you with some uh, strategies, some techniques there in order for you to actually pass the examination. And consider to also give us a thumbs up on the video. That way we get more engagement on the video and YouTube and Facebook will push the video so we can reach as many students as possible. So smash the like button, share the video and bring on people that we can have them on to assist everyone in the stream. So, Nayan, like I was saying to you, uh, you said that I have prepared so hard, still couldn't clear PM for that. Some of my friends suggested to do both kits. Uh, is it necessary, sir, in order to overcome my question interpretation issue? Yeah, if you have time, the more questions you solve, the more you're going to 
expose yourself to uh, a lot of areas in the syllables in order to in, in how you can prepare well for the examination. But um, with the interpretation issues, for instance, I would want you to uh, send me hi on, on Skype. Okay, so Nayan, I don't know if you are already connected with me on Skype, but you can send me hi on Skype. It's a uh, premium educator on Skype. Okay, so let me just put that here for you. Um, premium educator. So you can send me, um, that's my Skype ID. So send me a message on Skype. I don't know how you are going about with the interpretation. Probably you are doing something wrong. So that's my Skype ID, Premium Educator. Connect with me on Skype. Let me see uh, if I can uh, assist you in some areas in that case. Probably uh, you are not writing the, the things well so that it doesn't matter how many questions you solve. If your English, your grammar, your understanding, and your interpretation doesn't form well with the question structure, then you will still get it wrong in relation to that. So uh, connect with me on Skype and let's see uh, what we can do in that case, if we can connect and then uh, provide you with some suggestions there. Michelle Ban said, thank you for the tips on the FR and MA. It's a pleasure, Michelle. Nicole Williams said, Sir, I will need your help in risk assessment and application to the scenario. Okay. Risk assessment is a very critical area in advanced audit and assurance. Uh, I think I have covered something on risk assessment, I guess, on the channel already, but I don't know. Um, Nicole, you can also reach out to me on Skype on the same uh, Skype ID there. So you can also reach out to me on Skype. Uh, let's see what we can do in that case. Uh, if already probably you are not uh, attending lectures or something like that, then we could uh, provide you with some content on our study portal. Definitely at uh, a pay, one of our paid content uh, at a discount so that you'll be able to get access to the full course. So you'll be able to prepare well for the examination. So you can reach me on Skype or WhatsApp 050-114-9296. The number is scrolling below your screen there. Uh, Raoga, sorry if I don't mention your name right, okay? Forgive me. Uh, Mukwahima, Mukwahima, all right? Forgive me if I don't mention your name right. Mukwahima. I think that one is nicer than the first one. Mukwahima, something like that. I'm writing money in my accounting a week from now. Go. If you're writing money in my accounting a week from now, I'll be giving a couple of uh, strategies on money accounting. Money in my accounting is partly reading, partly computation. So you've got to make sure that you understand the fundamental issues in management accounting, like I've said. Short-term decision-making is going to be critical there. Business valuation, very critical there. Um, variance analysis, very critical there. Uh, dealing with issues in relation to um, absorption costing, marginal costing, activity-based costing, very critical there in relation to that. Then the theory areas are going to be coming in there. So you've got to make sure that in as much as you are practicing a lot of questions, in as much as you are solving the calculated or calculation questions, you've got to make sure that you also pay attention to uh, the theory areas and read the theory areas in order for you to increase your chances of ultimately passing the examination. So that is what I will say in relation to that uh, Makwahima. Okay, so I think you brought a build up question said, what must I focus on in absorption and uh, variable costing? Definitely, uh, you, there is nothing to focus on there. All you need to do is to understand the principle. So under absorption costing, what are the principles in the determination of the cost sheet or the profit statement using absorption costing? You have to make sure that you know how to deal with the over absorption, under absorption. In the variable costing or marginal costing principle, you must make sure you understand the issue in relation to uh, how we deal with uh, the fixed cost, the variable cost, what should be included in the uh, determination of the contribution, what should be included in the determination of the net profit. That is very, very critical in relation to that. I think you brought another build-up question there. 
Makwahiri said, I need your help, please, to prepare for management accounting. Um, I don't know the, the, the kind of help you would want, so you can uh, reach out on, on Skype. So you can reach out on Skype. That is my Skype ID on the screen, uh, Premium Educator. So when you reach out on Skype, I'll be able to uh, have a call with you on Skype uh, at, a, at a scheduled time. And then uh, we will see what we can do in order to assist you. Like I said, if it requires uh, something beyond just a one call thing, then definitely you would have to enroll in one of our paid course online where you get access to the full course and be able to focus on uh, key areas for the examination. Victor Amponsa Droko. Today, Victor, you are watching on Facebook. Okay, that's great. Uh, I'm doing MA and FM, but have not finished everything. Okay, it's not a crime. We still have about five weeks to go. So, um, FM, you got to make sure that uh, you focus on some key areas in financial management, like business valuation is a very critical area. Sources of finance is a very critical area. Costs of, cost of capital, very critical area. Investment appraisal, very critical area. Rates management, that is forex exchange rates, and then interest rates, rates very, very critical. Then uh, financial, uh, how do we call it? Um, there is this thing, time value of money. Uh, it's one of the areas that you need to look out for as well, but not that much area. But the areas I want you to look out for big, uh, largely will be the things I mentioned earlier, business valuation, cost of capital, sources of finance, now, definitely under sources of finance, Islamic finance is very critical there. The examiner will visit, might visit there and ask you some questions in relation to that. So you've got to make sure that you build your knowledge on uh, sources of finance and cost of capital. And I hope that you are attending lectures. You are not doing this on your own. So once you are attending lectures, you'll be able to be guided with some specific questions in those specific areas that I've mentioned in order for you to uh, prepare well for the examination. Like I say all the time, do not do this on your own. Okay, maybe sometimes you say, Shira, I don't have money. It's a lie. You have money, all right? You have money to pay for, to be able to uh, have access to uh, a class. And uh, for those of you who are also on the standby waiting for uh, intervention class to join, uh, you've got to make sure that miracles don't happen in the intervention class. The intervention class is just a point where you are assisted. Now, sometimes it's just a day or two days meeting, and that is all. So you don't expect everything to be crumbled within that time. But it is a time where, like the topics I just mentioned to you, the same thing will be mentioned there, and then you'll be provided with some specific strategies. But you have to be working throughout the spirit till the exams actually is due. So that is what I would say in relation to that, Victor. Uh, Mukwahini said, noted, sir, thank you. You know, if I have to mention your name, I need to do like this so that I don't, so that I don't, I mention it right. Forgive me, okay? If I don't mention it right for you. Roland Fair said, good evening, sir. Please, I need some tips on, for case study. Uh-oh. Roland Fair, for case study, this is what I will tell you. Make sure you focus, you, you are strong in all of the, uh, how do we call it? All of the modules in strategic case study okay all of the modules like the portes five forces the portes diamond the answer of growth metrics uh the did i say yeah the answer of growth metrics the bcg metrics the pistol analysis make sure you understand the modules now you've got to be careful here now um you don't just uh read the modules but you must make sure you understand how to apply the modules so you don't just chew baba on the modules, but rather you learn how to apply the modules. I remember, you know, I teach strategic case study as well. I have a book on that uh, as well, uh, available on Amazon. And uh, this semester, we finished with the modules, and we were having a discussion because I brought a practice question there. And as we were going through the questions, some of the students, after the class, we're like, yeah, Ishira, yeah, this is the time that I'm getting the understanding because um, we are now getting how the modules apply to the case study. So you need to know the modules, but don't chew the modules baba and copy them because you will contextualize the module based on the key 
uh, case study that is before you. So the tip I'll give you is that when it comes to strategy case study, don't do anything. Make sure you focus on the modules. Understand the modules very well. When you finish with a module, that is a key aspect of it. Then you come to the second category, that is corporate governance. Governance is very critical. No matter how the scenario is, the examiner will find questions on governance and bring it to the exam hall. Because corporate governance is one of the key areas right now, especially even in Ghana, and the Bank of Ghana and other regulatory authorities are developing some rigorous uh, governance principles that companies must adhere to. So irrespective of how the case study is, even if it's a sole proprietorship case study, the examiner will find something about governance and bring it in. So you got to make sure you understand various issues about governance. Then the last aspect will be the finance perspective because in the exam hall, definitely there will be something on financial perspective, either uh, evaluating the financial performance or position of the company, either uh, calculating the cash budget or either preparing some other computative analysis for the, ex for the examiner. But note that primarily it's going to be written. So you have to make sure that you build your knowledge, you build the understanding very well in order to increase your chances of passing the examination. I hope, again, role and fair, that you are also attending lectures for the strategic case study. It's very, very critical where you are taking through how those principles are used in practice, how they are applied to various short, short scenarios, and how you practice even before the pre-scene comes. If you have not exposed yourself to any case study where the modules are being used, or you don't even understand the modules and how they apply, then you will not be in a better position to pass the exam. So, uh, Roland, when it comes to strategic case study, that is what I'm going to say in relation to that. I see some of you coming on the live stream. You are welcome to the stream. Comment in the chat box with any questions that you have uh, for me. And give us a thumbs up on the video when you join. That way we get more engagement on the video. And YouTube and Facebook will be able to push the video so we can reach as many students as possible. So smash the thumbs up button for us. Uh, that is how we get more engagement on the video. And in case you've not subscribed to the channel, I don't know why you've not subscribed to the channel though, but you've got to subscribe to the channel and become a VIP member. That way, when I release new content and I go live, or go live, you'll be the first person to be notified, and YouTube will be able to share uh, the details with you as you uh, join us on the live stream. Victor Dropo said, thanks, sir. You are welcome, Victor. All right, Victor, you are watching both on Facebook and YouTube. Oh, you have moved from YouTube to Facebook now. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, Makwahini said, did I say Makwa again? Mukwahini. All right, Mukwahini. Since I will be practicing different questions, is it possible to give me your WhatsApp number to forward you the questions and my workings for corrections and guidance? Uh, Makwahini, that is uh, the challenge there. Uh, you, our, the line, the number scrolling below the screen, you can send questions on, but certainly my availability is limited because uh, I wouldn't be able to uh, answer any questions or even solve full questions with you uh, privately in relation to that because my time is limited and uh, I have a lot of paid students as well who I need to give my time to. So, yes, you can uh, send the questions on WhatsApp, uh, like that, the number scrolling below the screen, plus 233 uh, But I wouldn't be able to cons consistently uh, provide you with answers or even solve a full questions with you, full question with you, because of my availability, okay? Because of my availability. I have a lot of paid students, and I need to... Uh, provide them with assistance they need to pass the examination. So that is what I would say concerning uh, your request in relation to that. All right, so any other questions for me real quick? What subjects are you writing? What tips would you want me to provide you with? What areas do you have challenges in? Let me provide you with some strategies real quick in order for you to uh, prepare well 
for the examination. So, I'm seeing a comment coming in. Uh, okay. Now, one of the key things you need to understand is that before you register for the examination, now stay with me carefully, before you register for the examination, there are a couple of factors you have to take into consideration. Like I tell you all the time, this examination is not try or lucky. This examination is not like playing Ludo. Okay, this examination is not like lottery where you bet your faith on what is likely to happen later on. So before you register for the exams, there are a couple of questions I want you to ask yourself. Number one, I want you to ask yourself, will I pass this exam? Number two, I want you to ask yourself, am I positioned to write these exams and pass? Number three, what is my strength or what are my strengths in this subject that I'm registering for? And number four, what are my weaknesses in the subjects that I'm going to write? So number one, will I pass this exam? Number two, am I positioned to pass this exam? Number three, what are my weaknesses or strengths in, in the paper that I'm registering? And number four, what are the areas of weaknesses? It's very, very critical for you to do this personal sword analysis before you register for the exams because sometimes people register for the exams like they are betting their life thinking that oh they are going to pass and uh, they will go into the exam or and they fail and they are like yo ica is difficult ica is hard but i keep on telling people that the subject that you said is hard the thing that you said is difficult someone passed so why did the someone pass and why did you fail? It's simple. It's because of, yes, God is there for everybody. Yes, the grace of God is there for everybody. But the, you don't just sit down and say the grace of God, by the grace of God you will pass, so you don't study. By the grace of God you will pass, so you don't put in the work. So before you pass the exams, before you pass the exams, it's very, very critical for you to be able to ask yourself these four questions because they are critical. Will I pass this exam? Listen, you, you, don't, you don't register for the exam hoping to pass. You need to write, register for the exams being certain that you're going to pass the exams based on the way that you're going to be putting into it. So you want to make sure that you understand these things. So ask yourself right now, five weeks to go, some of you three weeks to go, some of you just a week to go, uh, maybe you've not registered yet or you are yet to register, ask yourself, am I in a position to pass the exams? It's very, very critical. Now, if you realize that you have a couple of weaknesses, then you need to ask yourself, can I overcome this weakness before I actually go into the exam hall? Now, this is where I talk about mentorship. Okay? This is where I talk about mentorship and guide. So that you are not studying on your own, but you are learning under the mentorship of somebody to, who is going to guide you. Somebody who will tell you that, hey, do this. Don't do this. Solve these questions. Don't solve these questions. Answer the questions this way. Don't answer it this way. This grammar is no good. This is what you have to say. That, that, that is why you need a mentor to be able to hold your hands on this journey to make the journey more interesting for you. Because sometimes you can be studying on your own and you think that, yo, you understand everything that you are studying, you, 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 flow, you flow with everything that you are studying, only for you to get to the exam hall to realize that what you study as compared to what, was in the, what, what, what is in the exam hall, there is a bigger gap. So you have to make sure that you understand that because that is going to be very critical if you're going to pass the exams and you're going to take your life to the next level. Now, let me address a couple of questions real quick. Adam Adams, uh, she, she said, what's your Facebook handle? Is your premium official? So is your premium the same name on YouTube? You will see there in that case. Carlos Robert said, Sir, is it true that in an FR exam, there is a dummy question that is, that will not be marked by the examiner? I don't, I don't understand. 
Is it true that in an FR exam, there is a dummy question that will not be marked by the examiner? Carlos, Robert, what do you mean by that? That there will be a dummy question that it will not be marked by the examiner? I don't understand. Because if you are giving five questions, you're supposed to answer all the five questions. Uh, what we know is that, what I know is that there is a professional mark available as well for a good presentation, uh, grammar, uh, uh, and some other things taken into consideration. But I don't know what you mean by dummy question that will not be marked by the examiner. Maybe clarify it, then I can know exactly what you're talking about. Nicole said, Sir, I'm trying to add a number on WhatsApp, but it's failing. I'm in Jamaica. Uh, in Jamaica, you just add plus 233, three, and I think you should be able to go through. Because the country code is plus 233. Three. So let me put that in the chat for you as well. Plus 233-5011-4-9296. I'm going to put that on the screen for you. So plus two three three five zero one one four nine two nine six. So that is the the plus two three three is the country code. So once you reach on the country code like that, you will be able to uh, get us in relation to that. Okay, Nicole. So with that, you should be able to get it. Roland said, "Thanks, sir, for the tips on case study. You are welcome." Uh, Nayan said, "Great, sir. Okay." Eric Asumenin said, Sir, I'm writing FM and FR, your advice. Uh, Eric, I've just finished talking about FM and FR. Uh, I've spoken about that already. Uh, I said FR, you need to focus on the standards. Uh, make sure you are strong in the uh, ratio interpretation. Make sure you are strong in question five, ethics, uh, conceptual framework, regulatory framework. Once you are good in these areas, consolidation should be the final question you answer in the exam hall and i've shared a couple of things earlier for fm the focus areas will be to look at business valuation sources of finance cost of capital investment appraisal these are key areas you have to focus on because the examiner will definitely ask you some questions in these areas and so you have to be in the position to be able to answer these questions in relation to that but like i said i've shared some uh tips on this already uh in the stream any other questions? I see some of you joining, coming on the stream as well. Welcome to the stream. And uh, comment in the chat box. Let me know the subjects that you are writing. And most importantly, tell me the areas of challenges, uh, the areas you have challenges in, so that I can provide you with some strategies on how you can actually overcome that and be able to take your uh, career to the next level in relation to that. Now, so like I, I, keep, I said, as you are preparing yourself to write, register for the exams, you have to be committed that, hey, will I pass this exams? When I sit for this exam today, am I going to pass? And that is very, very critical in relation to that. I cannot overemphasize that. I cannot uh, say that you, you, you shouldn't do that. So make sure that you spend some time to look at that very well. Abu... Uh, Kari Gafaru Avocat Gorgesberg Alhaji Baba Nicholas Sawini. Thank you very much for the thumbs up on Facebook and uh, other people as well. Thanks, sir. Venue for the master class. Our master class is uh, actually via Zoom. So if we are going to be admitting students coming on board, it's going to be strictly via Zoom. So it's not a physical, it's going to be via, via Zoom. So with a master class enrollment, what is going to happen is that you'll be able to get access to our study portal. Um, you'll be able to get access to our lecture videos. You'll be able to get access to our question kits. And it's a three weeks master class okay it's a three weeks master class okay so you're going to get question kits then you will be able to also join our zoom sessions for our master class so that is what you need to understand in relation to that so you get access to our study portal the lecture videos the question kits 
uh, and also get access to uh, Zoom sessions in relation to that. And all that is coming at uh, 325 Ghana cities per paper. So it is not uh, just anything. So it's 325 Ghana cities per paper. To join our executive revision masterclass, it's a three weeks executive revision masterclass. You get access to our study portal, get access to our lecture videos, get access to our question kits, get access to our Zoom sessions, and you study directly under my mentorship where I'm going to have one on one sessions with you to assist you in order for you to prepare well for the examination. So, uh, that is the starting point 325 per paper. And it's for three weeks in relation to that. We don't do a uh, one day show or something like that. It's a whole three weeks where you go through the process, do a lot of project works, go through our mock, go through our question discussions to be able to prepare well for the examination. So, that is it. Uh, if you ask about it, Eric. Right, so any other questions, put it in the chat box uh, for me. Any other questions, put it in the chat box for me. So, as like I said, as you are preparing to write the exams, there are a couple of key areas that you need to focus on, and there are a couple of questions, like I said, you need to ask yourself. Now, certainly, you cannot be 100% prepared for the exams. Okay, always there is going to be a surprise in the exam hall. Always there is going to be a surprise in the exam hall. There is going to be something in the exam hall that you don't understand. There is going to be something in the exam hall that you've not seen before. There is going to be something in the exam hall that you might not have heard before. But the way you reduce the number of things that you are unfamiliar with is to be able to expose yourself to a lot of questions. That is why I kept, I keep on saying that Make sure you get an ICA question kit, okay? They are going to help you a lot for you to be able to prepare well for your examination and most importantly, pass the exams in relation to that. So make sure that you uh, find out what is my strength. And if you are studying on your own, please, uh, like I keep on saying, it is not the best thing to do, okay? It is not the best thing to do because if you are studying on your own, you are a bit a little bit torn apart you don't know the areas you have to focus on you don't know the questions you are solving uh maybe you are also limited to the books that you are you need to have if you have questions on something you might go and google it but there are sometimes googling or watching a video will not be enough you need someone to answer the specific questions that is why i keep on saying that you have to be uh, uh, studying under the mentorship of someone, you have to be part of the community. That way you will be assisted better to actually prepare well for the examination. to actually prepare well for the examination. So Gabriel Kogu said, I'm writing FA and business uh, law. Okay, so financial accounting and business law. Financial accounting is a fundamental area. You make sure that you focus interpretation of financial statement, very critical, partnership, very critical, companies account, very critical. Then some fundamental issues like uh, correction of errors and suspense account. Um, Bank reconciliation statements, very critical area. So proprietorship is very critical area in financial accounting. With business law, definitely there is a question waiting for you on uh, sale of goods, law of contracts, companies. Definitely there is a question waiting for you there in relation to that. So that is also something you need to understand, Gabriel Kogo, on the subject that you are writing. As so many, it's giving us a thumbs up uh, in there in relation to that. So any other questions for me? Any other questions for me on how you can prepare well for the exams and most importantly, pass the exams? Let me know if you have any other questions for me. Let's see here. OK. 
Okay, so I see a comment coming in. All right. Okay, so I see some comments coming in from YouTube. Uh, let's see and bring them up real quick. Um, Prena Aurora said, Sir, F9 retake tips, please, for December 2020. Right. So F9 retake uh, in December goes back to the key areas, right? Sources of finance, business valuation, investment appraisal, cost of capital. So what I would advise is you need to find out areas that you have challenges with. Okay, if you have written the paper before, uh, you need to find out the areas that you have challenges with. So sit down, look at yourself retrospectively, and uh, find out, okay, I have issues with investment appraisal. When it comes to this, I cannot treat it. And expose yourself to a number of questions there. But practice is going to be critical. The more questions you solve, the more you are able to expose yourself to uh, various treatments. And that is how you'll be able to uh, prepare well for the examination. So Aurora, what I will suggest is, yes, continue to practice a lot of questions, but make sure you know areas that you are strong with. By now, uh, maybe by now, you should be able to identify that, oh, when it comes to questions on business valuation, or uh, maybe asset-based valuation, I don't have problem with it. Dividend valuation, I don't have problem with it. But when it comes to price earnings ratio, I have a problem with it. Maybe under the price earnings ratio, you know that the value of the company is going to be the earnings times the PE ratio. And the earnings will come from the target firm, that is the companies whose value we are determining. But the PE ratio may come from a proxy company or the acquirer's uh, PE ratio. And you know that the PE ratio of a listed company or the industry average is supposed to always be adjusted. So these are some minor, minor treatments that you need to understand. So you have to know the areas that you are strong in, the areas that you have weaknesses in, then you now hit those areas with a lot of questions so you will be rounded up in that case. Nonetheless, don't let dopamine set in because if you write the exams before, sometimes you get like maybe 47 or 48 and you'll be like, oh, remaining small work and then I'll cross. No, 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 no. You need to pretend as though you are starting all over again. So even if you feel you, feel you know something, even if you feel you have strength in it, still make sure that you practice questions in that area so that you keep your knowledge fresh so that you, you be able to identify other challenges that you might be having even though you thought that you are strong in those areas so what i would say is that make sure you don't just uh study the paper like though you are retaking it so you are just going to do some minor minor work no pretend as though it is the first time you are writing the paper just that you are going to be going in strategically to find out the key areas you need to focus on you need to work on in order for you to increase your chances of passing the examination so aurora that is what i will say about the f9 rating then let's see carlos said i would appreciate if you make a video on how of how to answer an fr section c question i mean should we show the workings after displaying financial statements then linking the inputs to your workings below yes uh definitely okay but I, I think i'll touch on this uh tomorrow on the live stream carlos on how you can answer uh the questions in the exam hall i'll touch on this strictly tomorrow because uh it's one of the issues that we've had and uh one of the things that the chief examiner's report has listed but uh you can do your workings and then prepare the financial statement or prepare the financial statement or and, and do the workings later or link it together but then whether the workings comes first or the financial statement comes first in the financial statement you must indicate the workings number then you'll be able to uh link it up in that case but like i said i'll be touching on that tomorrow god willing there is no need to make a video on my above query and explanation will survive yeah definitely in f9 is it necessary to solve each and every of section c or five to six questions of every topic will be 
enough. Covering Kaplan will be enough for F9. I have used only Kaplan for F7, uh, FR. Oh, like I said, don't put a limit on your solve and say, I'm solving five or six questions. If you have time and you can solve as many questions as possible, go for it. But this is the thing you need to understand. It is not just about how many questions you solve that will position you to pass the examination, but it's about whether you understand what you are doing. Because if you, for the first time you solved the question and you got it wrong, you went to check the solution and you understood. Then you did it again, you got it wrong, you went to check the solution, you understood. Then the problem is that you don't understand the topic. So it is not necessarily about how many questions. Yeah, it is good to expose yourself to a lot of questions, but you cannot expose yourself to as many questions as possible because of the time factors and other factors. So what I would say is that you have to understand the fundamental principles when it comes to financial reporting, like when it comes to uh, uh, financial management, like if you t deal with cost of capital, what are the fundamental principles? When it comes to dealing with cost of debt, you must understand whether the debt is a redeemable debt or an irredeemable debt. Now, if the debt is an, uh, a redeemable debt, then the cost of capital computation is going to be like the internal rate of return. Now, if the debt is irredeemable, then the cost of capital is going to be using the KD formula. But you know that we have cost of debt before tax, cost of debt after tax. When do we do cost of debt before tax? When do we do cost of debt after tax? These are principles you need to understand. When it comes to cost of equity, we can calculate the cost of equity using the dividend uh, formula to calculate the KE, cost of equity. But then there is also another way we can calculate cost of equity, taking into consideration the uh, equity beta of the entity that is using the capital asset pricing module to be able to value the cost of equity. Now, if the equity beta is not given, the examiner could give you the asset beta, then you would have to read here to be able to now calculate the equity beta, then you'll be able to calculate the capital asset pricing module. All these are principles. Okay, so when you understand these principles, then when you now go to a question, you can solve it. But if you solve numerous questions, but you don't understand the fundamental principles, principle of uh, how various treatments will be done, then you wouldn't be able to excel. So yes, it is good for you to look at the questions, but I will also recommend that you make sure you uh, focus a lot on making sure you understand the principles because that will help you to actually pass the examination. So now I am Gupta, that is what I would say. Uh, Prana Aurora said, thank you. I will surely follow your tips. It's a pleasure. Nayan said, key areas I'll focus on in F9. Definitely great stuff, great tips, sir. Thanks for uh, conducting this useful session for us. It's a pleasure, Nayan. Carlos said, okay, thank you so much. That's the explanation I needed. Awesome. Uh, Nicole Williams said, thanks. Up now, Wet said, you will hear, you will be hearing from me. Okay. Um, Williams. All right. Williams from Jamaica. All right. Okay, so that is what you need to understand. I see some of you guys joining as well, coming on the stream. Uh, any questions, any other questions you want me to share my thoughts on? What papers are you writing? What areas you have challenges in? And let me see if I can touch on some other things uh, quickly for today. I'll be doing another session tomorrow and we'll be going into the exam hall. So tomorrow I'll be taking you to the exam hall really to find out how you have to position yourself in the exam hall, right? What you need to do, how you need to prepare yourself before the exam hall, how you need to address the questions, how you need to read the questions and all of those aspects. We're going to be dealing with that, God willing, next week because uh, it's very, very critical you understand what you need to do in the exam hall. Carlos said, sorry to include this in your video, sir, but I need to ask Nayan for this FR uh, Kaplan kit. Good vibes. Nayan, do you have a soft copy 
uh, Kaplan Remission Kits for F7. Uh, I think you can download a sample of that on, on Google. So when you, if you want the free version, since you don't want to pay, uh, you could download that in that case. So you just Google uh, Cap FR Kaplan Kit. You should be able to get some content there that will assist you to prepare well for the exams. Mayan said, yes, sir, understood. First get a principal, then the questions as much as possible. Thanks, sir. You are welcome, Nayan. So that is the key thing, okay? Irrespective of the subject you are writing, name it, financial reporting, corporate reporting, taxation, uh, management accounting, financial management, financial reporting, all the uh, subjects, the first thing is you need to understand the principle. Back then, uh, some time ago, I, I, I explained something called the academic success triangle. You can find it in the how-to playlist on the channel, the academic success triangle, where I explained the three stages you need, uh, the three stages you need to go through in order for you to pass the examination. The first thing is to understand the key principles. That is the first stage. The second stage is to get what is called an examination analysis document. This focuses on the key areas that are examinable. If you use, if you are an ACCA student using uh, ACCA books, when you open the book, I think before the page, of the content page, you will see the examination analysis document there showing you a trend of key uh, areas that the examiner has been examining. Then once you understand that, remember, you understand the key principles first. Step two, you get an examination analysis document. Then step three, you now practice questions. Not only past questions, but questions coming from various angles for you to increase your chances of, of, of passing the exams. What I see people do is that they jump the step one, they jump the step two, and they go to step three. They will solve questions and solve and solve and solve. They will pick the question kits. They will solve it. They will look at the question. They can't solve it. They go to the solution. They don't even understand it. If you experience anything like that, the problem is not your inability to answer the question. The problem is that you don't understand the principles. So you have to go back and understand the principles that uh, governs the treatment of the various topics that you are dealing with in relation to that. When you do that, then you should be able to uh, increase your chances of ultimately passing the examination. So that is what I would say in relation to that. Okay, that is what I would say in relation to that. Okay, Carlos said thank you. You are welcome, Carlos. Right, so any other questions for me? These are some tips that I want to uh, provide you with today in order for you to uh, prepare well for the examination and most importantly, uh, pass the examination. So let me know if there are any other questions. Tomorrow, like I said, I will again be touching on some of these things. I will be... Uh, Coming again to uh, talk to you about uh, this. And like I said, we'll be going into the exam hall really uh, tomorrow where I'll provide you with some strategies on what you need to do uh, for the exams, uh, how you have to position yourself, and then how you prepare yourself mentally, emotionally uh, in the exam hall how you need to allocate your time. Because like I keep on saying this, uh, there is nothing like time management. You cannot manage time, okay? Because you don't manage time. There is what is called self-discipline. You need to discipline yourself on how you can allocate time to various aspects of your life. And that is how you can increase your chances of passing the examination. So tomorrow, I'm going to be focusing on uh, self-discipline, time what do you know as time management and to help you to find out uh, how you can allocate time to various topics, various subject areas, so that you can, in the next one week, in the next five weeks, whatever exams you have, how you can allocate time each day, each time. Then when you get to the exam or how you can allocate time as well to the various aspects of the questions and to increase your chances of actually passing the examination. So that is something that you need to understand uh 
diary aye leki said many thanks for the tips always a pleasure uh daily or diary oye leki forgive me if i don't mention your name right okay just forgive me right so thank you very much for joining the stream i'll be concluding around here uh today i hope that we've been able to share some thoughts on various issues uh to assist you in order for you to prepare well for your examination and most importantly to be able to take your career to the next level remember my objective is for you to be able to go into the exam hall and be able to literally murder the paper come out with uh, 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 uh the vein results come and boom you pass the exams and you'll be able to take your life to the next level so that is it about today god willing tomorrow i'll come your way with another session on the exam steps, how to uh, pass the examination. And like I said, we'll be focusing on time management or what I prefer to call it as self-discipline on how you can allocate time to different areas of the syllabus for you to be able to actually pass the examination. For you to actually pass the examination. So that is it uh, about today. Thank you very much for joining the stream. It's always a pleasure coming your way and providing you with some strategies that you need in order for you to prepare for the exams. Nayan said, love you from India, sir. You are doing a great job. Have a nice weekend and it's night right now, so have a nice uh, day, sir. Okay. Yes, India is around six and a half hours uh, ahead of Ghana, so I guess you are you should be sleeping by now. You should be, uh, it's getting to around 12 a.m. in India also. So uh, sleep well, and I'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Uh, night in India right now, yes. Nicole, sir, thank you, sir, and blessings, all right? Always a pleasure. I'll catch you same time tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. or 16.30 p.m., 16.30 or 16.30 GMT on the live stream as we continue with our discussion. Remember... If you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon. That way, if I go live, YouTube will be able to send you the notification and you can join the stream with us and connect with us. Remember to also follow me on Instagram if you are not following me on Instagram because our details, questions to be solved and discussions will be posted on Instagram at Inshira Premium, the same name you see here on the channel. So thank you very much. I will see you same time tomorrow as we continue with our discussion towards the examination. Okay. So Nayan said, thanks. It is 11, 12, okay, PM. Right, right. Okay, that's it. So thank you very much, and I'll see you same time tomorrow. Stay blessed, and bye-bye.